Welcome back. You're watching Newsmaker Live on DVS with me, Kendall Birch. Now, a special guest this evening, uh, Jewel Quelo Rosberg, the gender specialist at the UNFPA, and Flavia Cherry, national representative for CAFRA, also the coordinator of Caribbean Coalition on Population and Development. We have our first call. Let's take that call. Good evening. We lost that call. Let's continue our conversation. We were talking about um, the need for education, mm -hmm. especially at the school level. Um, we're talking about bullying, sexual harassment at that level. Um, I know last month, um, observance, um, Unite, the Unite campaign observance mm -hmm. was focused around um, schools and girls and harassment, whether um, over the, the internet on various forms. Um, we have another call. Let's take that call. Good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening. Yeah. To speak to Miss Flavia Cherry on a matter with a little child, but I live. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's a 13 year old child that's pregnant and she's not going to school. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I need to speak to Miss Flavia on that off air, please, because I don't want to find myself in trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay, well, I will suggest that you call the program um, Call Back. Okay. And you can give the number to the operator off the air and they'll pass it on to Miss uh, Cherry for you very happily. Okay. Is that the extent of your contribution? Make a balance. Yeah. Um, we had a call um, who wants to speak to you off air. He's concerned about the uh, future of a 13 year old who is now pregnant. Um, so at some point, I imagine he will call back and um, leave his contact information for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're speaking with Flavia Cherry of the uh, National Representative for CAFRA, that is, as well as Jewel Quilo Rosberg, the Gender Specialist at UNFPA, the United Nations Population Fund, um, also here doing a special workshop on gender-based violence and related issues. Um, we were talking about the sexual harassment and gender-based violence at the school level. Um, before we, we took our break. Um, I believe you had another point that you wanted to make on that issue. Um, one of the, I think one of the concerns we have had is that in terms of the national response, um, mm -hmm. a number of countries have identified activities that can be done. And one of the things we did today was to look at creative ways mm -hmm. um, of using the social media in helping us to educate our young persons because we know how much time young people right. spend mm -hmm. in that arena and I was amazed I myself was learning I feel like I'm from the dark ages when I hear we had a couple mm -hmm. young participants in the group and I was amazed at the suggestions that came from them mm -hmm. as to how we can reach young persons she talked about um, uh, she talked about the fact that you can send messages in info I'll th you remember that word? Yes. It was in for something. You send out uh, a line and you to use Twitter mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. get these responses coming up. Now I don't know, it's interesting because young people seem to be so well tuned into mm -hmm. this. Tech savvy. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I, I'm just like, wow. Mm -hmm. So you really can do and yes and she's saying, I'm going to collect all of this and it's like we have all this this these people here aren't you doing this you should be doing this you know so for me that was an eye-opener the extent to which perhaps we can use technology to help us given that young people are on the internet they are using it and I don't know the extent to which parents can monitor that mm -hmm. and I heard there are ways in which they can monitor but then perhaps taking a more positive twist that we can do that um, but again the whole issue of public awareness we, s we spoke earlier about getting into schools Mm -hmm. um, working with teachers so that teachers are able to support um, um, that whole education process using the kind of information that came out of the review of the textbook to see where gaps exist in the text right. that we're using in in the schools and uh, but teachers have to be trained in additional ways to understand how the, to bridge the gaps that they're seeing so there's a lot of work around what Whatever it is we decide we'll have to do mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and Flavia made uh, um, she made reference to this earlier when we talk about 
if we decide we're going to, to, to do work in schools, then there's a whole battery of things that must accompany that. We have to look at the textbooks we're using. We have to look at um, the teachers and whether they have the skills to communicate in a way that allows them to bridge the gaps that exist already, which you won't get the textbooks to change right now. Mm -hmm. And then how you can move from there into other areas of the work that we need to do. And that so was the question I was, uh, I was asking before yes. the break. Um, is, has that discussion started already or is it still at the level of the UNFPA and um, the local representative? Um, the discussion in terms of education at the school level? Yeah. I think the discussion has started at the, the, yeah, the discussion has started at a mm -hmm. higher policy level right. because remember we also have discussions that happen at the CARICOM level mm -hmm. and there are high level discussions that are held for example during mm -hmm. the UNITE campaign a lot of these issues came to the fore right. and many governments committed to make progress on these issues that is why one of the requests from UNFPA today to the St. Lucian participants right. especially the government workers was to identify what progress has been made and what areas areas needs to be strengthened. Okay, we have another call. Let's take that call. Good evening, caller. You're on the air. Yes, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Miss Flavia Cherry. Yes. And Mr. Kendall Booth. How are you doing? Good. Good, good. thanks. Okay, what I would like to say, what I would like to ask you all is that, don't you think the media has a part to play in that? I think, I think that point was made very early on, yes. Yes, we spoke now, about the importance of the media. Mm -hmm. Now, the kind of closing some of us by for our children, it's very, very bad, you know. Say that again? How the chest out, the back out. The the out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Now, in Vedas, song saying, um, so mothers hold on to your children. Right. Careful, next thing you drop, you put money in the mood. So be careful. Okay? That's my contribution. Okay. You Thank you. Yeah, I. I, I I accept that the, um, sometimes clothing can be more appropriate, mm -hmm. but I think we need to be careful to not mm -hmm. give the impression that because of the way a person is dressed, that mm -hmm. that is any excuse for anyone to behave like an animal. Mm -hmm. We all are human beings. We are expected to behave based on a code of conduct. And it, no matter how a person is dressed, there's absolutely no excuse mm -hmm. for violence or sexual violence. So to say that a child is dressed with the back out and halter top and short pants, that means that you dress the children up. I mean, the, we they are no longer in the dark days. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are civilized human beings. We are expected to respect children as their children. And no matter how they dress, we are expected to re to respect them. Okay, let's shift um, focus mm -hmm. on to um, reproductive health. Okay, how aware do you think um, women are, Caribbean women or local women, in your case, uh, Miss Cherry, of their reproductive health? Well. A lot of progress has been made in mm -hmm. terms of uh, reproductive health of women. I, I know, for example, that a lot of work is done for the Ministry of Health, for the primary health care system, etc. But we still have a long way to go because, again, because of uh, a lot of um, norms and what some people consider to be socially acceptable and because of patriarchy, um, there seems to be a perception that um, women should not have sexual autonomy. And there are issues, for example, where women... Um, weight on men in terms of deciding on how to protect their own sexual health. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes women are even embarrassed to um, to use a condom or to request the use of a condom because in, in that sense some of them believe that if they do so it appears that they're too wise mm -hmm. when in fact we do not have the luxury today of, no, of not having women who are sexually empowered in that sense right. who, to have sexual autonomy and to decide exactly the manner and the way in which they would have sex for example. And so in terms of reproductive health, I think we still have some way to go to break down some of the barriers and some of the issues of patriarchy that impede progress in ensuring women's overall sexual health. And also um, there are issues of, um, uh, for example, even in the ICPD program of action and from as early as 1994 when the, me the meeting was held in Cairo, we have always known that it is very important for women to be able to do women and men to determine the number the spacing of their children this is a mm -hmm. basic fundamental right mm -hmm. and to this day we still have issues of sexual autonomy we still have laws in place we still have uh, uh, a lot of things that prevent women from deciding mm -hmm. when and how to have children women need to decide whether they want to have a child whether they want to um, terminate a pregnancy and mm -hmm. it really needs to be a woman's decision and all of these aspects are also tied into the issue of reproductive health okay we have another call good evening caller you're on here what I would like to say is that um, they should mm -hmm. implement the hanging. 
for situation, this kind of situations. Okay. Then pray in the little children. Mm-hmm. No, I shouldn't blame the hunting for that, brother. Good night. Okay, thank you for calling. <laughs> Did you get that? No, not clearly. He okay. said they should implement mm-hmm. hanging, especially mm-hmm. for those who abuse kids. No, we um, we, we re- <laughs> I think it's so mm-hmm. important for us to have sanctions for mm-hmm. abuse of children, mm-hmm. but we need to be mindful not to just say, like we say in Sindhu Japan, you coupe this and coupe that, because un- unlike Jewel pointed out, there are many programs that can be put in place to deal with perpetrators. Mm-hmm. We need to ensure that perpetrators are held to account, that they go through the justice system and that they are put in prison if they have to. But we also need social intervention programs because a lot of people who are perpetrators, um, it's a learned behavior. And so that is why we need to break the cycle from at the very earliest level right. so that we don't have a continuation of that cycle of violence. And we also need intervention programs. We need um, special programs for perpetrators as well to help them to have more socially acceptable behavior Mm -hmm. because we want all citizens to be productive citizens and when necessary, put them in jail. But when we can, we also should have programs in place to help people to move away from socially unacceptable behavior. Okay, we're due for a break. We'll take the break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation uh, conversation, sorry, <laughs> on gender-based violence and uh, reproductive health. And we'll take more of your calls and comments. We'll be right back.